10 to 20 percent more. Um, also, people who run their own business, they work on average more. They're under more stress. They have less time for friends, family, um, for leisure, past uh, activities, for hobbies, etc. Yet, those people who have their own business, about 39 percent of them, say that they're totally satisfied with what they do. Say that they're happy to have their own business. Say that they're happy to run their company. Whereas only 29, uh, 28% of salaried people say that they're happy with their jobs. Now this is a paradox, and I'll tell you why. How come somebody who works 10 to 20% more is under more stress, uh, but doesn't have time for friends and family? How is it possible that these people actually enjoy their work more? This is a, a real paradox. And I think the answer will come back to me later in the presentation. But just to give you a hint, uh, the answer to that question is that it's actually uh, the, the autonomy and the independence that those, uh, that those people have. So with this, uh, let's move on to the next slide. Working for big companies. Um, I've done a more structured approach. I come from consulting. Uh, so it's a bit more, there's a bit more information on the slide. As you, some of you already know, there's a bit more information. The information is a bit more um, detailed and structured. So first, um, working for a big company, one of the big positives is that some professions are only available if you work for an organization. For example, Gana, she works for BTV. Now, if she wanted to go and start her own business, it would be very difficult to be a TV presenter because she would have to think about some other stuff. So, for people who want to be TV presenters, astronauts, or other professions, present in Bulgaria, you will have to basically work for an organization so it's impossible. The second, the second biggest benefit is that um, you get a regular salary. At the end of the month, you know, you get a paycheck, basically, you're good to go. You don't have to worry about bills, you got money in the bank account. Uh, you also get benefit packages, vacation, sick time, etc., etc., which are things that you don't usually get if you have your own business. Um, you also have a set work time. Now, I know a lot, of, a lot of you would probably disagree with this because they would, they would say, yeah, but my parents or my mom works from 9 till 9 every evening. Yes, there's a lot of exceptions, but in general, I think that most people who work uh, for a big company, they have a set work time. It's also easy to develop a network. For example, if you work for a big company, you have a lot of friends, uh, a lot of colleagues, you, have, um, you meet people on a daily basis, clients, etc. It's a lot easier to develop this network than if you're a business partner. Uh, have your own business. Um, also, for, for those who don't really work that hard, uh, basically you don't have to be a star performer to have a job. I know you've noticed many people who just have a job even though they're basically hardly working. You, you just see that they're sitting there but they're not really doing much. They're just sitting and yeah, that's one of the biggest pluses of working for a company that sometimes if you're not a star performer, it's okay. You, you, still, you can still have a job. Um, and also, it's usually, uh, usually it's easier to start a job than start your own business. Now, all we have to do is, uh, just to start a job is basically prepare your CV, motivation letter, and I'm sure they're going to teach you how to do this later. And basically, once you do that, you apply, interview, and that's it. Whereas starting your own business takes a little, more, a little bit more effort, uh, time, etc. Now, some of, some of the disadvantages um, in some some organizations, especially organizations, especially big organizations, you might feel it's just a number. You're just nobody. Just one of the many people that who nobody really cares about, who might have a lot of idea, uh, ideas, etc., but you just don't care. Um, usually your career progress is going to take a lot of time. There's set, um, there's set time for your career progression. So, if, for example, if you're in the Army, you might have to work for two years before you get promoted to the next level, etc. Whereas if you have your own business, you will basically be allowed to skip a few steps if you're successful. Um, salary increases are usually slower. Um, for example, uh, the next uh, point, point there is that if you're 10 times more productive than your colleague, you can't just go to your boss and say, give me a 10, time high, 10 times higher salary. You know, your boss is going to say, okay, so what? Who cares, you know? Um, uh, basically, what you do on a daily basis, uh, and I'm sorry, it's my working all the time or is it, is it okay? Um, basically, daily activities will follow the, the policies and the procedures of the organization. And of course, the last, the last uh, negative side is that um, there's a lack of flexibility. When you work with somebody, you have a boss, he tells you basically what to do and what not to do, which is not the same when you have your own business. Now, let's take a look at the, uh, the positives and the negatives of having 
the own business. Again, some of the positives is that you have complete autonomy and flexibility. You can do whatever you want to do. You know, your own boss. Wake up at nine o'clock in the morning. You want to have coffee? You just go have coffee. You want to set your business meetings at nine o'clock in the evening? Yeah, go ahead. Nobody cares. Um, you determine the course of your career, which means that if you want to start a manufacturing plant, you can go ahead and do it. If you want to start a TV station, yeah. If you want to start a TV station, you can do it as well. There's nobody to stop you there. There's nobody to prevent you from doing that. You can just go as far as your dreams go. Um, the next thing is that you set your daily tasks and responsibilities. Like I said, you wake up in the morning, you just decide to go have a talking with your friends, you can do it. You decide to set up a business meeting at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, that's fine as well. Um, and the most important benefit or the most important advantage is basically that there's unlimited potential. Basically, the sky is the limit when it, when it comes to having your own business. Um, some of the negative sides now, um, of course, you can forget about your personal life because having your own business means that you're probably going to spend long hours working and working and working in the evening, in the morning, at night, when everybody's asleep, you're going to be thinking about your business. This is probably a big disadvantage. Um, usually there's a higher stress and responsibility. For example, if you, have, if, you, if you grow your company and if you have 20 employees or 30 employees, you're going to all these employees are going to depend on you. All, all of their families are going to depend on your skills and your abilities to make that business work. So that's a lot more responsibility than just having a job there. The success or failure of the company is entirely up to you. Uh, if, you if you're really skillful, if you work 10 times harder, you're going to be 10 times more successful. And the biggest, uh, basically, one second, let's just go back. I think the biggest drawback um, to having your own business is that you're not going to have a reliable and reasonable income. Some months you're going to have a lot of money, a lot of clients. Other months uh, you're not going to have any money. Now, these are obvious things. Um, I just wanted to present it to you in a structured way so when you make, start making that decision, you can just draw that list and remember it. and um, That should make it easier for you to decide. Now, some of you might say, well, why not just start my own business and go work? Um, if it's unsuccessful, if it fails, I can go work for a company. Or, for example, some of you might say, well, I want to go uh, work for a big company first and get some experience and then basically start my own company, right? Well, with anything in life, there's, there's some positives and negatives. There's some advantages and disadvantages of doing this. And I've listed some of these important advantages here. Um, for example, if you start working for a company, uh, the company's going to help you obtain work experience. Um, the company is going to help you develop a network. Now, if you want to switch from the company, however, if you look um, on the bottom there, if you want to switch from working uh, for a company to having your own business, I think the really, what's really important is that your first job, the first job is going to shape the way you think and the way you make, the way you make decisions, which means that if you start working for a good company, that's the benefit for you. When you start your own business, you're going to have the knowledge, you're going to have the skills to succeed. However, however, if you start working, start your career at a bad company, you're going to pick up and acquire some of those bad habits, bad decision making, which means that you're less likely to be successful later. Um, the, second, uh, the second negative there is that sometimes, not sometimes, actually the majority of people, once they start working with somebody, they're going to be afraid to leave that monthly salary, monthly paycheck. They're, just gonna, they, they're not going to risk, they're not risk takers. They just want to, take, to stay there and basically work for that salary. Now, uh, if, you decide, if you decide to start your own business first and then move to a company that's unsuccessful, um, your own business is going to help you develop le leadership skills because you're not going to have a boss to tell you what to do. You're going to be a one-man show usually in the beginning. Um, what you do on a daily basis, you're going to have to decide what you do and you have to follow through and execute all of your ideas. Uh, you're going to acquire some self-starter skills, meaning that, again, uh, you're, going to you're going to identify problems and then you're going to solve these problems. You're not going to wait for somebody to tell you to solve these problems. Now, these are two, two very important skills to have when you go to an organization. That's why I've listed them as um, positive side. Now, the negative side, the disadvantages are that um, once you start working for yourself, you're going to get used to being flexible and independent. Now, when you go work for a company, for a big company, all just forget about this flexibility and independence. It's all gone. 
You're going to have a boss. All of your decisions are going to go through several layers of approvals, and it's going to be very difficult for you um, to get adjusted to that new lifestyle. And then, um, once you run your own business, you're going to have individual decision making. Basically, you're going to make your own decisions. Now, when you start working for a company, um, all of your decisions, you're not going to initially you're not going to be allowed to, to make any decisions. You, um, all, everything you decide will have to go through several layers of approvals and which would take time and sometimes would discourage a lot of you from working um, or returning to the working company. On the next, the next time, uh, slide, what I've done is I've looked at personality types. I've looked at personality types and, and try to find a correlation between being a certain type of personality and the likelihood of having your own business or working for, um, for a company. Now, as you know, some of you might know, there's two types of personalities. Alpha personalities and beta personalities, right? None of us um, has just, none of us is an absolute alpha and none of us is an absolute beta. People are a mix of these two. However, if you, let's say, have a majority of alpha traits, that means that you, uh, you are alpha personality. If you are, have, if the majority of your traits are beta, that means that you have better personality. So let's take a look at briefly at the personality types and see if um, your future might be dependent on, on the, your personality type. Um, the alpha person is an automatic leader. Um, the alpha person is dominant in nature, confident and optimistic. Uh, they view problems as challenges. Um, they have goals. The alpha uh, personalities have goals and they, they will go through walls to try to accomplish those goals. Um, Alpha personalities are extrovert. For example, the easiest way to spot a personality is when you go to a party, the alpha person is the person who is talking to everybody. For example, you guys on this table, um, if you see somebody who is talking to everybody, that's definitely an alpha. And if you see somebody who is sitting in the corner, that's a beta personality right there. Um, alpha personalities resolve problems rather than go around them. And also they're flexible and adjust to change. Now let's take a look at some of the, the beta personality traits. The beta person is a follower. Um, they prefer to follow rather than lead. Um, when, when a beta person encounters a problem, they become less confident. Um, they don't like making decisions. Uh, they're introverted. Like I said, when you go to a party, the beta person is sitting in the corner. The alpha person is talking to everybody. Um, the beta pers uh, personality types um, they like to complain, and they, they, they like to complain. When I first came back to Bulgaria, I spent maybe 12 years abroad, and when, when I first came back to Bulgaria, I thought everybody's a beta personality, because everybody just complains so much. Life's unfair, we don't have money, there's a list of all these problems, right? And you wonder, okay, why is, this, why is everybody a beta personality? It's statistically possible, right? Um, the beta personalities are reactive rather than uh, proactive. So they, um, they wait life to happen to them. They don't make life happen. And there are passive personalities who basically depend on the alpha personality to make a decision. Now how does that work when you make a decision whether to start your own business or uh, start working for a company? No. There's a lot of exceptions. You're going to see, you're going to see a lot of uh, alpha and beta personalities uh, have their own business and a lot of alpha and beta personalities work for big companies. However, however, I think, I personally think from my experience that um, an alpha personality is more likely to be successful in having their own business. Again, saying that there's a lot of exceptions to that rule, but overall I think this is the rule of thumb that if you're an alpha personality, you have the skills, you have the leadership skills, you have the willingness to push problems through, uh, through problems and start your own business and develop it. Now this is the personality types. Um, I have some key messages for you. Um, uh, the first, from my experience, back then when I was growing up in Bulgaria, um, it was basically, I'm sorry, basically um, there was nobody to guide it. Uh, back, back in the early 90s, um, it was basically you had to discover everything. But now, having the advantage of having business leaders, uh, having Ghana coming and talking to you, etc. So it's a lot better than what it used to be back then. Um, now, the first key message is look for a job before you graduate. Now, how many of you are first year, or second year, third year, fourth year? Okay, so all you guys start looking for a job now, okay? The fourth year ones, okay? Because you just don't have time. Believe me, you just don't have time. 
for the for the for those who are first year, second year, third year students, make sure you do as many internships as possible. Just make sure you get every every kind of experience you can get. The second advice, second message um, is to make the most out of university. And when I say make the most out of university, I'm not saying get straight A's or sixes and fives as, as the grading system goes in Bulgaria. Don't do that. Uh, but just go out, make friends, develop your network, meet people, uh, develop your presentation skills, leadership skills, uh, understand yourself, make sure you know what, you, what your strengths are, what your uh, weaknesses are. This is very important later in life. Uh, then the third key message is uh, you should choose your first job very carefully. Now a lot of people say, well I just need money, let me just start this job. Now this is, this decision is wrong, okay? Um, it's wrong because your first job often, not always, but often determines your future success. So if you start working for a bad company, what well, that means is that you're not going to, you're less likely to be successful. Not impossible, but less likely. Um, now if you're thinking, if the idea of starting your own business is here with you now, um, why not start it now at university? Just go ahead, give it a shot. If it's successful, good for you. You don't have to look for a job after you graduate, right? Now, if it's unsuccessful, and let's say you're 21 or 22, you have the next 40 years until retirement to recover from that failure, right? <laughs> so you have plenty of time. Um, and the fifth one is, either way you go, uh, make sure you expand your network of people you know. Go to meetings. This is a good conference. Meet people. For example, you guys on the first table, make sure you know each other's names. Go and talk to the other table. Just keep in touch. Keep communicating. Keep bouncing ideas around because this is very important. It helps you shape yourself as a person and helps you get a different perspective on problems. And the last one is, don't forget to enjoy life in the process. Now a lot of you will get in this routine, work, 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 college, university, work. Don't forget you have family, don't forget you have friends, because you don't want to wake up one day and you're 60 and you look back at your life and you say, what did I do? Just stare at a computer or you know, just work all my life? Make sure you enjoy those moments. So that's for me. I'm going to open the table now for questions. I guess it's Gana, for the most part, because she's the star of the event. <laughs> Come on, Gana. So thank you all for... Uh...